it's, there's no, no clear way how to work with this. So what, what we could say is, okay, suppose, so we have basically functions which are simple and we know much about them. And these functions, these simple functions are polynomials. And we know we know a lot of them, actually, a lot about them. Actually, some of the problems are quite difficult for the pro for the polynomials, but still, it's it's much better than general functions. So, for example, we know how to derive them, or integrate them, or uh, calculate values. Now, if you, if you want to know what what is the value of x squared plus 2x plus 5 uh, of this, then if you want to know what, what is uh, f5, then you can just plug in and you will get this 25 plus 10 plus 5, meaning that this is uh, 40. So at least we can do some basic things about them. Like with the exponential, we don't have a clue how to do it. I can, like, the right question should be, okay, so how is the exponential defined? And you can, for example, define it even by properties that you can say, okay, so exponential is mm, a growing function which satisfies that exponential of fx plus y is exponential of x times exponential of y and which, for example, satisfies, uh, I don't know what to do, is this actually now complete, but uh, also satisfies this, that limit of, of x going to, to 0 of e to x minus 1 over x is equal to 1. So, so basically, um, basically it says that the, the derivation derivation of, of e to x uh, at zero is uh, is one uh, so you have this function basically and uh, this this exponential here and what, what what you can say is that okay so the derivative here diff at uh, Zero is zero is one. So, so these are like the conditions, and may, maybe maybe there is uh, one more. But the, the idea is you can you can define the function by properties. But from this, you don't have any idea how to com compute anything. So now, what comes uh, comes the following idea? Okay, so so let's say this is the space of all functions. So. I would like to not work with exact things because exact things are very hard to handle. So let's approximate. And let's approximate, let's say, some, some simple subspace. Yeah? And let's say, okay, so I have this, this function f. So instead of it, let's, let's use some function b p k yeah, such that f is approximately p k in in some in some sense it depends on on your specific specific uh, requirements you want from the approximation so th there are two two things what what means good approximation in this setting and what what are these simple simple subspaces? And one of the, the most simple subspaces we already discussed here are these subspaces of polynomials. So we can basically define that if P P of K is uh, let's say set or subspace because um, like if if you know some linear algebra basically these these uh, you can consider functions as, as vectors and then if you sum two functions you will get also there's uh, there's summation together in the subspace and you will get also scaling so so let's pk is uh, set or subspace or um, of all polynomials of degree uh, degree, let's say at most scale. 
So what we immediately know that we have uh, this this P0 which are constant functions and it's subspace of P1, subspace of P2 and so on to some PK and you can actually go uh, go to something called p omega p infinity which would be which would be something like like uh, functions uh, which are uh, something something called called analytic that you can define them by some infinite polynomial analytic functions yeah, so so you can you can define them by by infinite polynomial and uh, like basically some series and this series is converging at uh, at least in uh, somewhere locally around some point. Yeah, so we have we have these these analytic analytic functions. Okay, so so this this seems pretty a pretty good idea. So now the question is is uh, what what will be good approximation? So always what you want, you would like to choose from all possible polynomials from from PK. You would like to choose choose the one polynomial from PK which which is minimizing something. So in our case, we would like to make uh, for Tyler polynomial we would like to make the um, we would like to we would like to make uh, basically the um, local local error the smallest possible. So we would like to to make the the local error of the of the remainder. We want basically if you, if you have some approximation pk, then we want that f f x uh, minus uh, pk of x, which is a remainder. K of x, so we want this this thing. If you, if you compare it to x minus k, x minus a to k to be to be zero x s x tends to to uh, a. So this says basically as we are going closer and closer to a, this this thing here is much much larger. So error is basically much much smaller than x minus a to k yeah and this is quite this is quite good if you are using an approximation which is which is basically of a polynomial of degree k yeah if you would be uh, trying to solve some some different problem it might be useful to do minimization in some different sense. So then, then you will get different types of series. Uh, you can, for example, you can, for example, get um, stuff like Fourier series, where your subspace is a space of of sines and cosines, and and you approximate the function by um, the periodic function by by some sum of sines, sines and cosines. So, so you have like, your periodic function, which is like this, and you approximate it by by some sines and cosines and uh, this this thing is useful in different settings. This is this is not minimizing uh, locally around some point. It's minimizing everywhere, and then it's it's quite famous for many applications. For example, you can solve some specific differential equations using Fourier series. But in our setting, what we want is to to minimize this this error locally around point A. So our approximation will get better and better as we go closer and closer to to point X. And we will actually actually see some some examples examples of that in, in the end of the lecture. Okay, so so this is this is the statement that basically we will we will take that the Tyler's polynomial we already built it. So, so I, will, I will define it again. Okay, so we have Tyler polynomial Tyler's polynomial of degree k. And uh, yeah, the assumption is that the function is, is uh, k times differentiable around point a. So we have this this pk of x, which is equal to to f of a plus f prime of a times um, x minus a over one factorial plus f prime of f two primes of a x minus a squared over 
two factorial and so on and we already described how how the thing is de defined f of k of x k factorial and basically what we need to do is first of all to show that uh, that it is the the best approximation and second of all how big is is the error now because like this is this is still not strong we know we know it's like smaller that it's uh, smaller than this but the question is how much because suppose that i don't know you you want to you want to calculate your your let's say you want to calculate the value of e so you can take the function e to x and you know that if you derive it you will get e to x but now um, and now you will take uh, if you if you write down the, the Taylor's polynomial you will get that this is uh, the value f at point and we will take a is some point with that we know how the function works so we will take point zero and we know that the value there is one plus the derivation at the point is also one times x minus zero is uh, x so x over one factorial plus x square here over two factorial and so on to x to k over k factorial so you have this this polynomial here and now uh, you know that your error if if you compute uh, will be will be smaller than than uh, this uh, one one two k basically um, your error is asymptotically smaller than um, than basically basically this this thing here. So so then uh, x uh, then x two x two k. <laughs> what, what does it mean? It doesn't tell you much. First of all, it's asymptotically smaller, so it could still be extremely large for a specific value. And the second of all, okay, so it could be like x2, uh, k, I don't know, x, x2, um, k plus um, epsilon or something. Yeah, the x is very small here. so. Uh, could be it could be something like that. It could still be, it could still be quite huge. So we would like to have some some more more specific specific bounds. Yeah. And we can do that. So, so, uh, but we will require some more assumptions on the function that this k time differential around point a won't be sufficient because we will also need something some some nice behavior between x and a okay so 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 let's go let's go towards uh, proving of, of these things or actually we, we will later state what what is the exact formula of two and there are two reasons because i i don't remember the exact formula and also it doesn't make any sense to state the result before we will obtain it so we will really derive how how it works but um first before we will prove the the first point we will need some tool to work work with derivatives and this nice tool is called L'Hopital's theorem. And basically, it says the following. Okay, so suppose that I have two functions. Let's say f of x and g of x. And I would like to compute the limit of their fraction, the ratio, as x tends to some point a and then either f x tends to zero and, and g x tends to zero as we go to as we go towards a or g 
of x tends to plus minus infinity. Yeah, so then what we can do, we can exactly compute limit of, of this x going to a of, of their derivatives. And of course now we now we require something like like that this these uh, denominators are non-zero and this is non-zero and this, this garbage assumptions that we can we can derive but we don't really care much about them and so what what this thing says so first of all we have two functions satisfying some conditions now instead of, of looking what will happen because because this is basically like comparing which one of the functions is larger is growing faster as we go to a it's much larger yeah it what could happen either either the function f is going to win or the function g is going to win or they they are growing somehow the same and then we will get some constant around around point a so what we say, okay, so we don't really need to compare the functions. We can actually compare rate of the change of the function, how fast they grow. And if we know how fast they grow, if the function f, if f is growing much faster than g, <laughs> It doesn't matter what was the origin of value. Only, only thing that, that matters is that f is going to win. So then, this limit and both of the limits, both limits are equal plus infinity. Similarly, if g is growing faster, then g is going to win and both limits are equal to zero. But maybe what's, what's uh, quite surprising is that, okay, so if, if both of the functions are growing pretty much the same, so this, this thing is, is equal, this thing here is equal to some constant c, then also the ratio is some constant c. But actually, actually not so much because basically what you can really say is that it does not uh, matter what was the initial value. So whether they started somehow somehow shifted or they started at the same point like this or like here, but they are growing somehow the, the same the same fast. So what should really happen is that that uh, the the ratio here. Um, as as we go should be really the ratio of the of the speeds. It should it should be it should be nothing else. As we go closer and closer to zero. So if if this thing is going I don't know two times faster, what should happen is that also this value will be after some time almost two times two times larger. Okay, so so this is this is the thing actually. If you want to prove it, you will uh, use somehow the. Um, the Cauchy's uh, or um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is for for Cauchy's uh, mean mean value theorem, and uh, this will not be so difficult because basically what you know is this: if this if both of these things are are going to zero, then after some point, both of them will be very very small, and then, then you know in this case, so I have a function which has very small derivative after some point. So I can, I can state something something about that using using Cauchy's theorem. I will know that I will get uh, very very close with this um, something. I I don't have I, ho I definitely didn't didn't prepare proof of this, but it should not be it should be quite straightforward using using Cauchy, uh, Cauchy's mean value theorem. Yeah, because because basically this is this is what uh, this is really too uh, made made for uh, things like this. That basically, you know something about the derivations that they are going to somehow you see, and you would like to know something about the origin of function. Oh, this is this is this this is quite quite natural thing. Um, yeah, so so when I was also uh, using using this Cauchy Cauchy's mean value theorem, we will we will get to it in 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 a second. Yeah, so when we